What is going on, YouTube? Welcome to Hobbies and Movies. We're going to be talking about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Da, 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 da. <laughs> All right, guys, I've been waiting to do this discussion review video uh, because I wanted to sit down and brainstorm, marinate, have plenty of discussions with Erica and my friends about the film. And that's it. I came to my conclusion. Uh, I did my research. I I've read uh plenty of reviews and articles uh depicting how good or bad the film may be how uh you know uh rotten tomatoes critics uh they praised it and loved it and while the audiences hated it and there's so much wrong with the film they fucked up the franchise they fucked up luke skywalker ryan johnson doesn't know what he's doing he ruined luke skywalker i've read it all guys i and, and i don't agree with it i really don't Sorry about that. There's going to be no editing and no extra music in this. This is not going to be a flashy video. This is going to be one of those hard-nosed discussions. So, yeah. You guys see I put the positives and negatives of how I felt about the film itself. Uh, but, yeah, I want to go over a few things. Uh, basically, I don't agree or even comprehend or understand the excessive hate uh, that Ryan Johnson has received Disney is definitely milking the franchise. We already know that. Uh, these are movies that ended ages ago, and they're bringing it back because they want to revive the franchise. So that is nothing new. And, and I'm glad that they're milking it. I'm glad they revived it. I never in a million years thought that I would see another Star Wars film. So I've taken these films with uh, uh, that conscience, you know? And I've had a fun ride with all of them, even Rogue One, Force Awakens, and now The Last Jedi. Uh, but yeah, let me just focus on The Last Jedi because I go all around and then I won't get to the points I want to make. Um, so yeah, I get it. Everyone has their own opinion. Everyone can say whatever the hell they want. Uh, you know, that's what the internet is for. There's a bunch of keyboard warriors out there sending death threats to Ryan Johnson saying he doesn't know shit. And guys... That's all bullshit because let's break down Luke Skywalker. Let's start this discussion by breaking down Luke Skywalker himself. Mark Hamill came out saying, that is not my Luke Skywalker. And I'm going to stop it right there and say, that is my Luke Skywalker. Because let's just, let's put aside that this is, at the end of the day, this is just entertainment and this is all bullshit and this is just for fun. This is just... You know, to pass time. This isn't real. Luke Skywalker is not a real person. But let's just dive into that universe. Let's focus on the fact that Luke Skywalker had a, a, a crazy poor upbringing. Uh, you know, when we saw him in A New Hope, he had no clue uh, where his life was headed. And then we saw him... Um, you know, grow and then even train to be a Jedi and, and, and lose Obi-Wan and go through all these ups and downs through that trilogy, right? He goes through everything, highs and lows. And ultimately, in Return of the Jedi, we see Luke, you know, become, uh, you know, a, a, a master, I would say. And we got to see him to, to, to finally fulfill his destiny, right? Uh, overthrow the, the empire, whatnot, blah, blah, blah. So then, a ridiculous amount of years later, I don't know, two, three decades, whatever uh, gap there is between, you know, episode six and seven, uh, you know, we find out that, you know, the Knights of Ren happened and uh, the kids he trained died and that he went off somewhere. They don't know where he is. So we finally catch up and we find him. Boom. The movie ends and here's The Last Jedi. There's a bunch of speculation. Everyone is like assuming they know everything and they want to say that they know how Luke should have been. But that's bullshit. It is. And I'll tell you why. Because in The Last Jedi, we get a tormented, broken down Luke Skywalker. And that's how he should be. This is this is not a little happy happy fairy tale everything needs to be sparkles and princesses and this and this and uh, i just think that that's bullshit i think that uh, a guy who's lived on his own for so many years in exile um apart from everything that's been going on in the galaxy which now we have the first order taking over he feels he's to blame for kylo ren becoming kylo ren you know, 
He went on to try to kill Kylo Ren early on. Ben Solo, his nephew, was training to be uh, a Jedi. And, and Luke felt his power. Luke felt the dark side. So he wanted to end it. And even in that key moment that we saw in the film, he was torn. It didn't even look like he was ultimately going to do it. It looked like he was going to pussy out. He felt like a coward. I'm sorry for, for, the, for the language, but, um, you know, he, he was going to cower out. And, and then Ben Solo wakes up. He sees his uncle trying to kill him. And boom, the conflict begins. So a guy that has gone through the ups and downs of life and, and then meeting Rey, coming with the Millennium Falcon, there's no Han Solo. He could already assume that Han Solo himself is gone. Uh, so guys, how are you going to expect for Luke to be any different than how he was in this film? It's just unreal. I feel like there was true character in uh, who Luke was in this film. I, I feel like this is a real uh, interpretation of who he was to become anyways because of everything that he went through. So I agree with every decision that was with Luke. I feel like Mark Hamill himself acted phenomenal. I felt like he, he this is his best performance. And, and yet we have Mark Hamill saying, this is not my Luke. Uh, I get it. He's a fan of the series like a lot of us are. He's super passionate about the character, but it doesn't mean he knows everything. It doesn't mean that he's the right man to write a Star Wars film just because he was in the originals. That doesn't mean that. Ryan Johnson is a fan of the Star Wars lore. He did read. He did do his research. And this is what he felt uh, was right. And this is something that the franchise needed to break away from that prototype blueprint of the same notes in each trilogy and the similarities and, and 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 guys everyone that saw force awakens that was pissed off about it or said that it was garbage or whatever they said that it was all too similar to a new hope that there was too much familiarity so then we get the last jedi that's completely different that sets the tone for a new era of star wars and it gets this ridiculous backlash as I stated before on other videos, even now, and, and every, every time I talk about opinions, it's to each his own. I understand that. But the excessive amount of hate, I just feel like it's uncalled for. So, I want to touch base on some of the negatives and elaborate on them. Finn and Rose are two characters in the film that I feel should have had some reduction in time. Why? Because Finn is just... So cool and awesome, but he was just misused, to be honest. Let's just be real here. This guy, uh, John Boyega, so charismatic, and he was misused. His whole uh, storyline in the movie was garbage. I, I didn't care for it. But it wasn't enough to ruin the film for me, to be honest. It wasn't. I really, really loved the movie, even though Finn, that was a pivotal part in Force Awakens, him being who he was in Force Awakens and in this one was a letdown, but it still didn't ruin it. And Rose being a new character, I just feel like I just didn't believe in her as much as I, I should have or could have or would have. But uh, yeah, that's that's my opinion, you know. Um, the Casino Planet sequence with Benicio Del Toro, that's not even the guy they're looking for. They end up finding him in a prison cell and he was just a wasted uh, actor. Uh, let's just be real. They could have put anybody in that role. He had a cool accent and he had, you know, his little moments or whatever. And, and he was just wasted, but I'm not mad about that. You know, wasted characters in a story this big are always going to be a theme. Um, but I just thought he was going to have more significance, to be honest. That's, that's, that's just my, my opinion. Uh, Phasma being another Boba Fett, that, that actually hurt a little bit because Phasma, uh, being the actress from Game of Thrones... Uh, I completely forgot her name right now. I'm so sorry. But uh, seeing her in Game of Thrones, how great she is there. Um, I thought we we're going to get maybe a cool moment without the mask. Or, or a moment for her to redeem herself for being so underwhelming in The Force Awakens. But no, we didn't get none of that. They just kill her off. Maybe they bring her back. We don't know that till till we watch the next one. But yeah, they, they basically just kill her off in, in a boring dumb short battle uh that could have been much more than what it was and she was nothing but hype and there was no substance there 
Um, and Ryan Johnson already came forward and said, hey, you know, she is part of Finn's storyline. And if Finn uh, doesn't get to where he got to, there was going to be no encounter with Phasma because no one else has that uh, arch nemesis role with Phasma. You know what I'm saying? Phasma is the arch nemesis for Finn. So I totally get it. I understand um, uh, what Ryan Johnson was trying to say about Phasma, but come on, man. We, we could have stuck her in somewhere else. She could have been in the background, or Kylo Ren could have given her a, a secret uh, mission or something. Um, that's just my personal opinion on Phasma. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. That doesn't break the movie either. That doesn't break the movie. Uh, Snoke is a missed opportunity. There was no backstory for him. And in, in, in Force Awakens, there was little snippets of Snook. And I was like, you know, I, I can't wait for the next one. So we know who this Supreme Leader is. You know, where he came from. How he got his powers. Um, but there was no flashbacks of him. And now that he's dead, it's like it doesn't even matter anymore. And, and I... You know, I guess maybe I'm just the most understanding Star Wars fan because I get why uh, they didn't stick more Snook in, the, in in here because he was going to die regardless. So there was no uh, building blocks that would have mattered anyways. Because to be honest, when Snook gets killed, it's still a significant scene because we do know that he is a supreme leader. And we know that supreme leaders tend to be these powerful entities and... and so just knowing that from the the Star Wars history, I guess maybe Ryan Johnson felt that that's enough um, for us to be like, okay, you know, him killing Snoke is a big deal. It's not just because he's the boss, but because we do know that this is a super powerful, you know, uh, villain. And for Kylo Ren to have gotten the upper hand even for one split second, it means that Kylo Ren is one badass sob, and um, you know, so. I guess, but it's still a missed opportunity because Snook looked pretty badass. His face all scarred up and messed up. There's a lot of story to have been told from uh, his face. <laughs> really messed up. Uh, so yeah, uh, Leia has no additional backstory. She There's a moment that she uses a force, which I thought was really cool. It was, it was a little cheesy, I'm not going to lie. But I thought it was a cool moment in the film that deserved a little bit more. I felt Leia could have had a little bit more... Uh, you know, backstory, but, you know, I, there's so many characters. Again, it wasn't a deal breaker for me. Knights of Ren uh, being left off, that probably bothered me the most. You know, Finn and Rose being misused, whatever. Rose is a new character. Finn, you know, he's a side character. But Knights of Ren being left off really bothered me because I wanted to know more about Kylo Ren. For me, it's like I, I love Kylo Ren so much. I want to know so much more about the guy. And I want to know what makes him tick. We already know what ultimately made him go to the dark side. But I want to know what made him tick, you know. Um, so, so yeah, I wish we would have gotten more Knights of Ren. But um, talking about race parents, uh, I do want to list that as a negative. Because I feel they could have maybe had uh, maybe a few more flashbacks uh, hidden uh, uh snuck around or something throughout the film or something uh not just a scene that uh you know kylo says oh yeah guess what you were sold for scraps you're nothing you're whatever you don't come from nothing uh join me you know i felt like that was just like for a story that was built up so big in force awakens to have been dropped over a couple lines by kylo I felt like we need a little bit more. Even though, yeah, yeah uh, now that I saw that uh, little uh, piece of the video, I know when she's on the island, they kind of tease that her parents uh, could be someone familiar. And ultimately, it's not. So you feel the disappointment, you know. <sighs> you know it's still a negative. I, I, and I have to list it as a negative now because I do know that Kylo Ren could have lied. I do know that in the next episode, it could be explained in a better manner. But as of right now, I have to list it as a negative. Um, but yeah, these are the negatives that I, that I had with the film itself. The film is not perfect. Um, but then again, no movie is, you know. Uh, I watch so many movies that, and, and I love plenty of franchises. And none of them are perfect, guys. We all know that shit. There's no perfect film. Uh, out there maybe a handful that you would consider perfect but it's still a matter of opinion of, of an opinion and the backlash that the last jedi has gotten in my opinion isn't isn't uh 
isn't fair because this is a movie that sets the tone for the future. This is a movie that sets up the possibility of having tons of uh, Star Wars films because the way that George Lucas created this universe, it was like you had to come from some kind of lineage to have the Force. And now the Force is something that everyone can tap into if trained properly. Not everyone has the same amount of uh, access to the Force from within, but, you know, someone like Ray, so passionate, so uh, uh, someone who believes in so much hope, someone who's so good, um, you know, we, we see uh, the possibility of it. Ray is a powerful, powerful being. And it's just because she is so, uh, so full of hope. And, and, and I keep saying hope because that's the theme of Star Wars. They throw around hope throughout the film like a million times. Um, another positive for me uh, was Paul Dameron. I think that uh, that little uh, opening scene with him uh, piloting was just great. And, and we see his failures and his his, uh, his his growth throughout the film. So I thought that they handled Poe uh, pretty well, considering that uh, he was just a side character in the first episode, uh, not the first episode, in the first uh, of this trilogy. And now we get to see him uh, learn more and grow from it and possibly become the next general. Uh, after Carrie Fisher, rest in peace, passed away, we don't know where her, her character is going to go. So maybe Poe could fill in that gap. Um, so I've talked about Ray. I've talked about Kylo Ren. Uh, to me, Kylo Ren, this movie, they did it right. Killing Snoke was definitely the best decision because now Kylo Ren is the supreme leader. We learned, uh, uh that this guy is even more ruthless than we could have ever imagined. Killing Han Solo was not a fluke. Even though we see some moments of weakness, uh, you know, he still, he was still a little bit torn in the beginning, uh, trying to kill his mom. But, um... You know, when it came to kill Snook, he, he was ready to go. And he wants to kill Luke Skywalker. He was ready to kill him as well. And that epic uh, uh, scene at the very end where Luke was was there through the force gave me chills. Uh, I just have no complaints with Luke Skywalker, especially Mark Hamill's performance being so great. You know, it just sucks to hear him say that that's not his Luke. That kind of bothered me a little bit because I felt like, you know, he poured his heart into it and, and we got some great results, but we got Mark Hamill saying that he portrayed this Luke Skywalker like if it was another Skywalker, not like if it was Luke. So it kind of sucks, but it still doesn't uh, hurt the movie for me. I still love it. It is what it is. I mean, I'm doing this video and you guys can see the passion. I'm really uh, 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 happy and excited about where this franchise might go in the future. Um, the epic throwdown with the red guards that were protecting Snook. Oh my God, that shit was amazing. There was no lightsaber action, like you know, gung 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 gung. <laughs> what the hell is that? But um, I really love that whole sequence. It was freaking spot on, Star Wars like. And Kylo Ren and Rey back to back fighting them off, and and the music and the and the choreography. Oh man, I just I can't wait to watch this movie again. That scene right there was worth the wait, and, and ugh, just uh, I was blown away when I saw it. I kind of I was like a little kid. I was watching that show, like oh shit. And when he killed Snook, I didn't even mention this, but when he killed Snook, I was watching the movie. My jaw was like, I was like, holy shit. You know, Erica looked at me and she's like, she started laughing, and I'm like. You know, did, did we just see this guy kill the supreme leader? It was just awesome. And then well, uh, after Ray leaves and, and Hawks comes in, uh, he tells uh, he tells Hawks that uh, Ray's the one that kills Snook. So it, it, you know, he's still evil, and he's he's ah oh, man. I'm just I'm happy where Kylo Ren is going. And I was actually worried because of the whole mask. Uh, situation you know he took it off he broke it i was a little mad about that watching the trailers because i love the mask that kylo ren had and um you know when he broke it and, and i was just like damn you know he's not gonna wear the mask anymore snook made fun of him for it and shit but then you know seeing uh adam driver's uh expression and, and just the way he he acts uh you know throughout the film <laughs> Oh man, I, I I just I really like it. I, I like him in that role. I thought he did awesome. And I think Ryan Johnson handled uh, this movie with a lot of respect. 
uh, uh, for for what J.J. Abrams was trying to do, which was build up these characters, right? Because aside from Finn, uh, Poe, Leia, Rey, uh, we uh, Kylo, uh, we got to see these characters, you know, uh, you know, evolve. Yeah, that we saw them evolve. That's what I'm, I was, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking so much crap. We're sitting here in 20 minutes, and I'm just like, I want to throw out so much more information out there. And I'm trying to really break down this discussion because I, I really love the movie, and I wanted to put my two cents out there, you know. Um, as far as, uh, you know, comparing it to Force Awakens, I still like Force Awakens a little bit more. You know, the familiarities to A New Hope that Force Awaken had and making uh, so much improvements to the story, adding more action, uh, just more characters. I thought that uh, Force Awakens was a, 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 a phenomenal film. And then The Last Jedi, it's a close second for me. I really think that this is going to be the best trilogy. And, and I'll tell you why. Uh, do I really enjoy the the originals and the prequels? Yeah, sure. I'm a, I'm a big fan of them, but I think these are better because uh, these are Star Wars movies, unlike the others. You know what I'm saying? And maybe it's like, oh, you're not a real Star Wars fan because they're not like the others. No, I just I really enjoyed uh, the the originals and the prequels for so long that I wanted to see something different, something fresh, and and. You know, they, oh, sorry, I hit the mic. <laughs> they served it to me in a platter, you know? Uh, Ryan Johnson was definitely the man for the job. He, he fucked shit up. He changed it. Everything we believed in Star Wars till now was changed. And, and, and going forward, it's going to be different. And now J.J. Abrams, which uh, directed uh, and co-wrote the first one, he's coming up to cl uh, batting cleanup. And, and he's going to turn this ship around. Hopefully uh, for the better. I, I just, I'm glad it's making so much money because it means Disney's gonna keep pumping them out, and, and there's still hits in the eyes of Disney as far as money goes, and the critics loved it. So I don't see anything wrong with this. Uh, Disney does tend to be a crowd pleaser, so I'm really scared that going forward they might tap into that crowd pleaser um, identity and possibly ruin uh, something special here. Because I think that it was time for change for Star Wars. Because uh, the memory of the past should definitely be relived through nostalgia and rewatching and enjoying it. But the past is the past. And the innovation that those movies brought at that time will never be forgotten or, or, or thrown away. Just because The Last Jedi changed the concept of the Star Wars franchise, it doesn't necessarily mean that the the originals don't belong in this world. If it weren't for the originals, there wouldn't be the significant amount of uh, of developed characters like a, a Leia or Luke Skywalker or the every time we get a little reference to Darth Vader or even Chewbacca that we see here on screen. You know, so I do appreciate what the originals and the prequels brought. Even though people do hate the prequels as well, I don't get it. I, I, I love the entire saga for better or for worse. Um, even Rogue One I felt was handled uh, properly. It ties in right into A uh, uh, New Hope, which is episode four, and it's, it, it's awesome. I, I, everything that Disney is doing up until this point has been awesome. They're making me feel like a fanboy. I've never been a fanboy of Star Wars, although I've always liked to, you know, have like little collectibles. Like, you know, I have the little Disney Infinity figure uh, for Kylo Ren and shit. I do have little collectibles and mugs and, you know, the popcorn bucket that you saw that uh, I got when I went to go see The Last Jedi. But it doesn't mean I've been like a fanboy where I've read every, uh, you know, um, the, those canon uh, books that they've made or the comics or played every single game. Um, unfortunately, I haven't. For me, Star Wars, it's a, it's about this uh, movie universe. And maybe I'm, I'm selling myself short because there's so much more out there, you know, in books and stuff. But, you know, it's just my, my way of uh, appreciating the franchise and enjoying the franchise. It's really through the movies and, and some, some games that I did get to play, like The Force Unleashed. But, um, you know, guys, I, I want you guys to comment down below. I would like to, you know, exchange comments if you guys made it this far into the video. 
I would like to definitely discuss more with you in the comments down below. I think I'm pretty much uh, about wrapped up here. Um, oh, one thing that I didn't mention was the big sense of loss. Uh, the resistance uh, fell apart. Nobody came uh, to their aid because everyone has surrendered to the first order. And that felt it, it was a real it was a real genuine moment where we felt that the resistance could ultimately be defeated. Obviously, there's going to be another one. So you kind of uh, in the back of your head, you kind of linger on to the fact that, hey, you know, this is a movie. They got to pump out one more. So the resistance can't fully die. But it, it, it was pretty close. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what direction uh episode nine goes as far as the resistance kylo ren ray or even luke uh making an appearance uh through the force or what um uh jj abrams and disney decide to to do for uh, for carrie fisher's character you know general leia because they gotta they gotta um they gotta include her somehow they didn't kill her off in this one or or write her into the sunset like fast and furious did with paul walker so um, those are some interesting things that I'm looking forward to. Uh, obviously, we're going to have a, a, a ridiculous amount of theories for the next film, uh, which we now learn that it's not so good because then you build up a, 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 a movie in your head. And then when you go watch the real deal, you know, it's like you're comparing it to what you had up here. And, you know... Maybe after watching the movie a few times and that element of surprise is gone, maybe you guys end up enjoying it more. But uh, for me, I can't wait to watch it again. Um, hopefully, I feel the same the same way I did as the first time. You know, I pick up on more things. Usually, when you watch a movie more than once, excuse me, uh, you end up picking up uh, new uh, new concepts and, and and new theories. So. Uh, I mean, we'll see, guys. Uh, we're over 25 minutes. Uh, I'm really happy I got to sit down and, and go over this with you. I know I was all over the place. I just wanted to make this off the top of my head. Didn't want to feel like I was reading a piece of paper. I did list the positives and negatives for you guys uh, and kept it up there for the whole video and, and kept the trailer playing in the background just for the sake of uh, having uh, some Star Wars themes going on here. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Comment down below, as I mentioned earlier, because I do want to continue the conversation of where uh, Star Wars... Well, where Star Wars? I can't even wrap up my own video. Damn. <laughs> so yeah, I just want to uh, continue the discussion in the comments down below, basically. Let me know uh, what you guys think. Peace.